Um, hi, so today we are going to speak about another fun mathematics, and this is this is something like second episode. And um, today topic is is about about origin of of graph theory. But first, we are going to speak about something slightly else, which is which is called planar graphs. So, so, so this is this is our topic topic for for this this lecture, and just just give me just let me let me give you some some um, quick reminder of of the last lecture because our objects we are going to to study here are our graphs, which which are some kind of of pictures like this. So so they consist of of two two parts. One of one of the parts are are vertices. Vertices are are these these uh, points, and you can imagine them as, as for example, um, cities on the map. So we have some kind of map, and and the other part are are edges, and edges are something like like roads connecting these cities together. So so we have some some primal objects which are for example cities or something like that and then we have connections between them some relations so mm, there are a lot of a lot of real life objects you can you can model easily using using graphs yeah so um the thing is that um, names like like vertices and edges are ki are kind of weird uh, we could easily imagine some better names for it which would like have some better meaning so it's so it's kind of interesting to to take a look how how the graph theory was formed and where these names appear at first and um, to do so we should uh, we should first speak about something which which is called planar graphs mm, as you, as you can see um, these these graphs are easily easily depicted by by pictures like this, and of course, in, in mathematics, we could do it also in opposite way. That we could we could define that a graph is, is some tuple of of vertices and and edges. So vertices in my my case will be will be set of four numbers, and edges will be a set of of tuples of 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 uh, adjacent adjacent pairs of, of vertices so so in this case it, it would look like something like one two one three one four and then so two two three I can actually write everything two four and the last one is, is three four so we have six six edges and and four vertices and we could we could work just just in this in this setting and everything would be fine but um, but for for people it's, it's it's much easier to work with nice pictures like this so we we want to to draw to draw nice picture and here is important question what what we consider by nice and nice is that we can understand the structure of the graph cr quite easily that they are not not like many many things which we could misunderstand in the picture so so imagine that, that I draw a similar picture like this mm, having let's say seven vertices each connected to each other yeah, or, or something something very similar I think like like this this is seven and then I'll we'll add, add edges here and as you, as you can see in a, in a while we have many edges over here and uh, if I have picture like this which is definitely not complete there are still many edges missing here it's quite difficult for me to understand which which pairs of objects are adjacent and which, which not so so this is not a very nice picture in my in my understanding so what we do would like to to have some pictures where no edges have to cross so things like this won't be, won't be allowed and the big question is which graphs can be can be drawn in, a, in, a, in a such a nice way that no crossing is required so for example this this graph and, and graph theory it's called k4 meaning complete graph on four vertices this, this graph this is not a correct drawing because we have one crossing here 
But you can draw it in a better way like this. That we have one vertex in the center and three vertices around it. And in this setting, the the picture is even quite quite symmetrical. So so it's even even nicer and, and much easier to to understand its structure. Yeah, so so definitely, planar graphs admit nicer drawings and also are quite um, quite nice graphs to consider. So first question we should we should ask is which graphs admit planar drawing? For example, we could be lucky and uh, every graph could could have some nice planar drawing. So we can we can work around it for a while and maybe maybe you know some kind of, of classic riddle that, that you have three houses like this and you have three uh, wells let me draw it and what we would like to do is to connect each house with a road with each each well so three roads from each house and we would like to find roads in such a way that no pair of, of roads is, is crossing intersecting each other uh, so we can we can start for example here draw roads like like this so the first first house is quite simple now for the second house this this road is simple and uh, let's say we draw it like this and this so we are fine and now for the third house we can connect it to to these these two wells but unfortunately it's not possible to connect it to the last one uh, so, so our drawing didn't work, and of course we could we could ask whether whether it's possible to draw it in, in some better way. Maybe maybe I was I was um, drawing this this first part some somewhat better way, and it didn't work out. And in fact, it's not possible to do it, no matter how how hard you can try. You never find a drawing which is which is planar, and uh, can easily translate this problem to to graph theory because mm, you have graph which has three vertices on, on one side, three vertices on, on the other other side, and th each vertex on one side is connected to each vertex on the other side. So the graph looks like something like this. And graphs um, this this specific graph is is called K33 and is it called complete bipartite tight graph? Uh, so, so K3 uh, complete is, is kind of simple, and bipartite means that you can split vertices to, to two parts, a uh, part A and part B, in such a way that edges are going only across the parts, so no edges in inside the parts are allowed. So, so graphs which which are perpetrated are kinda kinda simple for for many problems. Uh, so interesting uh, class of graphs. Mm. Yeah. So mm. and maybe maybe another classical example of, of a graph which admits no planar drawing is uh, K five complete graph on on five vertices. So we have five vertices. Each of them is connected to each other, and so so uh, this this graph either both both of these graphs admit no planar drawing. So. So these these two graphs are, are kind of ugly, but but still we would like to to have some some kind of um, of better theorem, which was which would allow us to to characterize maybe maybe all of all of these bad graphs. And so um, one can one can notice a thing thing like uh, this that that um, if 
if some graph H is, is not planar, then it cannot appear in any planar graph. And I will explain what, what does the appear mean in a second uh, in any planar graph. Uh, so, so one thing, one one way how we could consider appear is that we have some some graph, big graph G, and the graph H would be some smaller part of it. Uh, so, so if this this thing is is called, called subgraph, and meaning that we take graph G and we throw away some of its vertices and some of its edges, maybe even going inside. So we can consider subgraph meaning removing some vertices and edges yeah, something like this and also we could consider something which is called induced subgraph uh, which which just means that we remove we remove vertices and no edges inside, so so we just take some some subset of the vertices, and they will they will define the graph exactly. Nothing nothing more is allowed. And clearly, if H is not planar, it cannot be subgraph of G or induced subgraph. In in the case of, of planarity, these two these two terms are the same. But but in general, uh, we need we need to distinguish between them somehow someone somehow. So so this. Meaning cannot appear, cannot be, cannot uh, be a subgraph of any of any planar graph. Yeah, so, so in our case, we know that G is planar implies that K five. And k three three are not not subgraphs of of G. Let me denote it like this as a subset. It's slightly slightly obvious, but I think I think there is no misunderstanding. So, but um, something like this cannot be cannot be a complete characterization, because for example, we can we can consider graph which which looks like this that we we take the k five. And then we decide, for example, we could put some more vertices on, on the edges. So, for example, we have a graph like this with, with seven vertices, because like this, these edges were split in half and uh, changed to two, two edges connecting one vertex to these, to these two guys. Yeah, so, so something like this is called subdivision of, of an edge. Now we take an edge and put a vertex inside it. And clearly, if um, planar graphs, uh, if uh, sorry, sorry, if if uh, H is not planar, now then then any subdivision. Is not planar either. Uh, so if if you subdivide the edges, you cannot cannot create planar graph because like from from the structural point of view, nothing is changed. You just draw draw vertices on on the on the um, on the edges. So drawing cannot cannot get any better by subdividing. And and what is what is um, kind of nice and classical classical result. Is something called called Kuratowski theorem. Theorem, uh, which says the following: that G is is planar if and only if it does not contain subdivision. of K5 and K33 
So actually, these these two bad guys we we, we identified in the, in the beginning are are the 